Okay, so before we get started, I have a question, I have a joke, but it was sent to me, but I don't get it. If you have a cow steak, right? What happens when I cut it in half twice? What do I get? So you cut it in half and you get halves. You cut it one more time and you get quarters. What if I do that one more time? What do you get? Eights. You get a hamburger. What? <laughs> what? I'm only laughing because I didn't get it either. I was like, <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking like, is ham like German for eight or something? Yeah. Or, um, let's get on with the video. Today in the kitchen we are doing a remake. I am taking a recipe that I made almost four or five years ago and I am giving it a 2020 makeover Mediterranean style. These are stuffed tomatoes, really awesome for your meal prep. You don't want to miss the recipe. Let's go. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to grab our tomato. This is a hot house tomato. I like them because they just sit flat just like that so we don't have to add foil to them. Um, you can also use the beef steak. That's the one that I used in the original recipe. We're gonna slice off the top, and then you can take a spoon or you can take a small knife. I have, this is a grapefruit knife that I just randomly had. I, don't, I think this is one of those buys that like, I would never use this, but it comes in handy for things like this. And then I'm just gonna carve out the inside and then plop that right into a bowl. And then the way you do this with the spoon is just to scrape it out. In fact, the last part, once you cut out the insides, it's a lot easier to do with a spoon. And you see it's dull, so you literally just get to scrape out a lot easier all the seeds. Then we're gonna take our tomato, then add it to a baking dish. Next, we're gonna fire up a nonstick skillet, put it on medium high, high heat, spray it with a little bit of oil, and in goes the protein. I wanted to use some lamb, but you use whatever protein if you like. I have lamb and lean beef. Lamb is so flavorful and it can be high in fat, but lamb is also high in omega-6 fatty acids and also CLA, which stands for conjugated linoleic acid. Great for fat burning. That's the stuff that you buy at the grocery store, I mean at the supplement store, to help you out with the fat loss. I'm gonna chop it up. As it cooks, we're also gonna add in some onion. And go some onion and a little bit of garlic and continue chopping everything together and make sure that there are no large chunks of meat that everything is well mixed now let's add in some personality we're gonna add in some salt some pepper stay with me stay with me all right we're gonna toss in the thick cooked land seasoning it's herb tastic for stuff like this if you don't have this you can use some Italian seasoning or your favorite dried herb this one has more in it so that's why I recommend it a little bit of cumin. Boom. Now, Jesse, you want to smell this? I want you to smell this and guess what we're adding. It smells <laughs> is it nuts? Is it nuts? There you go. Cool, yeah. yeah. It's, this is allspice. Okay. Gonna use a little bit of allspice. Heck yeah. And it's gonna really elevate this dish. And as soon as you add it, this all the flavors begin to come together. Now, we're gonna add one more thing in here that we generally don't cook with in the Fitman Cook Kitchen. I actually like to add wine. And just a little bit of wine is okay. Now there is cooking wine and then there's also just regular red wine that you drink. This is one of my favorite ones to drink, by the way. This is not an ad or anything. Um, and we're just gonna pour in just a little bit of it. The cooking wine, often they'll add in spices and stuff like that to it and sodium. You don't need all that. You can season it yourself. Just use some regular red wine. I'm gonna add this in there. Boom, keep that heat high, and now we're just going to reduce it. Now while that's cooking, we're gonna chop up a little bit of Italian parsley. We're gonna add some parsley in there as well. Okay, now we've got the majority of the liquid evaporated. Now we're gonna add in the rice and bring everything together. Again, we want this to be one complete meal and one tomato, right? We are going to make a hole here in the skillet, and guess what we're gonna add in? That's right. We're gonna add in the pulp from the tomato. If you have digestion issues or if you're kind of sensitive, 
them, instead of adding in the pulp, you can just use some canned tomatoes. For some people, the seeds can cause a little bit of upset stomach. Where did we learn that, Jesse? Madagascar. Oh! <laughs> Add in the parsley, throw everything together. Now, if you are in a time crunch, then absolutely just go ahead and use some canned tomatoes or some canned tomato sauce, and that will speed this process along and you can save yourself about 10 or 15 minutes. But we aren't in a rush. So we're gonna show this the long way. We're gonna cover and cook this and let this simmer for about 15 minutes so that way all those flavors can begin to melt together. All right, here we go. Ooh, it looks beautiful. So we're gonna turn down the heat a little bit and you see, whenever you gently press on the tomatoes, they turn much more, more into a paste. And you can see, that's exactly what we want. Our last bit of work here, we're gonna add in some cooked rice. Beautiful long grain basmati rice. This has already been cooked. Fold everything together. You can use whatever type of grain that you prefer though. You could even use some farro. You could use some brown rice. You could use quinoa. As you're doing this, if you find that you need a little bit more liquid, you could just pour in some water or you can even use a little bit of beef broth. I think mine is fine as is. Let's go ahead and do a quick taste test, see what it needs. Mm. Nothing. Oh yeah. You know, we like this. You can stay for dinner. Now we're gonna take our mixture. We're gonna add it to each tomato. With the last bit of juice that we have left over, we can just pour some over. And just to create just a little bit of steam, I'm just gonna just pour in just a little bit of water or some broth in the bottom of the casserole dish. Then we're gonna cover this with foil. And then we're gonna bake this in the oven for at least 25 minutes at 410. Three, two, one, go. Dude, you just got destroyed. Oh, <laughs> I boxed with God and I won. <laughs> Shut up. That's because you never won anything in your whole life. He's a little bitter. He's on a roll now. I think I technically am on a roll if I beat both you guys, so. Jesse, oh. <laughs> Cook for a little bit longer than 25 minutes, but it was all well worth it. Took off the foil at the last bit. Now, let these cool down slightly before we take them out because we don't want them to fall apart. Finish off with a little bit of garnish, some fresh parsley, and sea salt, and pepper to taste. And this right here, Whenever you barely tap it, you see the way that the skin wrinkles? Comes right on off. That's how we know it's ready. Taste test. We're gonna slice it. This one is already just ready to go, so let's just, let's just finish it off, right? It's 10 times better than the original recipe. <laughs> it's so good. You know what it is? This is a wrong word to describe it, but it's sophisticated. And I think what sets it off is that you get the red wine deepens the flavor, but the allspice just comes in at the very end of it and just smooths everything out. <laughs> and just, you're like, dang, where is that taste coming from? You're gonna be trying to place it. <laughs> Try it. Can there I use a spoon instead? There we go, <laughs> probably would've been easier. See what I mean? Wow. It's just like, uh, I don't know, I just can't really, it's hard to really describe, it's just complex. It's perfect, it's that perfect like Italian flavor, mm -hmm. like almost like lasagna, you know. Yeah, this, it's the sweetness that gives it away for me though. Very end. Oh, 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 man, we forgot the garnish. So whenever you're serving it at home, you wanna save your, your tops and just do this. Oh, <laughs> fancy. <laughs> if you're making this for yourself, Throw these away. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for today's recipe. Hope that you really enjoyed it. I loved revisiting this recipe and doing it over again. If you like videos like this, and I invite you to smash that like button below, I loved revisiting this recipe four or five years later um, and doing an updated version of it. So if you've been following me long enough and you want to recommend another recipe for me to remix and redo, comment below with that recipe. Also, I want you to comment to see how you would actually improve this recipe for you and your household, still trying to keep it as minimal as possible. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, 
want you to keep it healthy, but of course, never ever boring. Boom! Bye, peeps.